Well, hello everyone. My name is Neil McDougall. I'm a technical project manager at SUSE and I'm the lead for the Stratos project. This session is all about Stratos and managing containerized applications in multi-cloud environments. So firstly, uh, by way of introduction, a few slides. You know, what is Stratos? It's a web-based management user interface for managing Cloud Foundry applications and Kubernetes workloads. Uh, I'm going to go through you know, a few slides here, and then you know, the bulk of this talk really will be a demo where I'll show you Stratos in action and highlight some of the uh, elements of the slides that I've, or the concepts in the slides I've been talking about. There are two GitHub repos, really, I'd like you to go and visit after this talk. One is the upstream Cloud Foundry version of Stratos, and the other is the SUSE fork of that, which introduces a few other um, pieces around Kubernetes and Helm. And we'll talk about those in the slides. So it's Stratos, you know, where did it start? It started back in 2017 with Cloud Foundry, which is an open source platform as a service, uh, which has a very particular focus on developer productivity. But at the time, it had no web-based user interface. It's very much a CLI-based uh, developer workflow. So SUSE created Stratos as a UI for Cloud Foundry. We open sourced it. Uh, we upstreamed it to Cloud Foundry initially as a, an incubated project. And then we graduated to become a core project within the Cloud Foundry community last year. Uh, so Stratos is very much the de facto uh, Cloud Foundry UI used by many people within the Cloud Foundry community. With SUSE, uh, as we sort of show here, our distribution of Cloud Foundry is slightly different to many others in that we uh, run it on top of Kubernetes. Our distribution is called the SUSE Cloud Application Platform. And the reason that we extended out Stratos, as, as we'll see, is, is partly because we embrace both Kubernetes and Cloud Foundry. So with that in mind, it turns out um, developers like to run applications in Cloud Foundry. Cloud Foundry provides a very opinionated framework for building applications that means developers can be very focused um, and they can be very productive in building applications because there are restrictions placed upon them. For many enterprises, that works uh, just fine and there are lots of uh, use case and applications that fit well into that model. There are, however, some that don't, and for those uh, developers and enterprises want to run those directly on top of Kubernetes as containerized workloads. So the, the view we kind of had initially here was SUSE Stratos console, running on top of, or running on top of the cloud application platform, being able to manage Cloud Foundry, and alongside that, containerized workloads deployed on uh, Kubernetes. So we thought, hey, why don't we have a unified management tool? We have developers and enterprises wanting to use both Kubernetes directly and Cloud Foundry. So we're going to extend Stratos out to cover both of those use cases. So through one single pane of glass, web-based UI, those developers, uh, those administrators can manage their applications and workloads regardless of where they're deployed. So we extended Stratos. And um, at the same time, uh, as you'll see, one of the main uh, features or concepts within Stratos is the ability to work with multi-cloud. So when we talk about Kubernetes, users might be using a hosted cloud offering like AKS, EKS, GKE, or they might be using SUSE's containers, uh, containers as a service platform, either on public cloud or in a private cloud or on-premise. And the thing with Stratos that we've worked hard for is to allow Stratos to manage your Kubernetes environment or your Cloud Foundry um, cluster regardless of where they're deployed. So you can connect your Stratos to those Kubernetes um, environments running wherever, and you can connect the same Stratos to your Cloud Foundry, whether it's running on public cloud, whether you're running it on premise as well. And regardless of whether it's a SUSE Cloud Foundry or one provided by another vendor. So if you have a mix and match of vendors, you can manage all of those through the same UI. Uh, and as I said, what's important about this is not only are we managing clusters from deployed in sort of different environments, we're able to manage multiple of those. So you can manage multiple Cloud Foundry clusters, multiple Kubernetes clusters. Um, you can connect a mixture of those um, as you wish. So if you have production or testing, staging, it doesn't matter. You can connect those all in and your developers, your administrators can see all of those in one place. So we started, as I said, with Cloud Foundry. Um, and then we added some Kubernetes uh, functionality in that we're still building out. And then we wanted to extend Stratos even further. 
So um, we added support for Prometheus and we added support for Helm repositories. Stratos itself is built to be extensible. We call these different uh, types of entity that we see here, we call those um, endpoints. So when I do the demo, you'll see me refer to endpoints and you'll see me register on connect endpoints. And Stratos has been built to be extensible. So you can add in different types of endpoints um, as and when necessary. If we have a CICD system, for example, or a uh, container registry, those are the kind of um, services where we can represent those through endpoints and we can add new functionality into Stratos. So that's, that's really quite nice. So what we've done um, in, in um, Stratos is build out our functionality against these endpoints. Obviously, we started with Cloud Foundry. Again, we'll show this in the demo. We have the ability to connect Stratos to one or more foundries. And as I said, it will work with any certified Cloud Foundry distribution. So some companies have a mix from vendors or they're migrating from a, a vendor to SUSE. And you know, we can connect to those different foundries and manage them from one place. We'll see the kind of functionality that Stratos has when I do the demo, but you know, you can deploy applications from within the UI. So one of the big uh, features uh, or concepts you'll hear about with Cloud Foundry, people talk about CF push. That's the CLI um, command that you use to push or deploy an application to Cloud Foundry. So the main developer command is CF push. And we have the equivalent through the uh, Stratos user interface. So you can go in, you can choose a GitHub repository or GitLab repository. And graphically through the UI, you can deploy your application through a browser, which is quite nice. Once you've got an application deployed, whether it be through Stratos or through the command line, you can view those applications. Uh, you can manage those. You can drill down into a particular application. You can SSH into the application instances from the browser. You can look at the logs for the different application instances, scale it up. Um, I'll show in the demo that we've integrated the autoscaler um, project that's in Cloud Foundry. So there's now a UI for that. So you can define policies that automatically scale your application. So that's quite a rich set of functionality around applications, which kind of is the bread and butter of the developer experience. Uh, we also have support for services. So this is a key concept in Cloud Foundry where you can have a service catalog and developers can create instances of those services and then connect them to their applications. So those might be things like database services or for an enterprise, they could be particular APIs or backend services that that business has that it wants to make available to its applications. So those services tend to be managed separately. They're, they're kind of long lived. They're, they're um, you know, you know, super reliable. Uh, applica application developers can come along not worrying about those services, how they're provisioned or where they run. They can create new applications quickly, connect them to the services, try something out. If it doesn't work, they can scrap that application, start on something new um, and connect to those services. So we have the ability to view those services in Stratos, create instances, connect them, um, all the functionality to expect. And we also have some functionality around the sort of foundry level itself. So you can view information about the build packs you have in your Cloud Foundry. You can look at the streaming log for the whole of your Foundry, um, that kind of stuff as well. For Kubernetes, so this is something we've added in the SUSE um, fork of Stratos, and this is something that we're looking to upstream. It's all open source. None of this is closed. So you, you can take uh, either the Cloud Foundry upstream version of Stratos or the downstream SUSE version and use those as you wish. But in the Kubernetes code, which is currently in the SUSE version, you can do the equivalent of with Cloud Foundry. So you can connect Stratos to one or more clusters. You can authenticate with Azure, AWS, GE, all of those. Um, so as I said, we'll work against all those different Kubernetes distributions. And some of the initial views are really around helping users um, understand how SUSE Cloud Application Platform is deployed and running in their Kubernetes environment. So let's not forget that SUSE Cloud Application Platform actually is deployed into Kubernetes itself. So it's an application or a workload that you can view within Stratos. But we have some initial basic views around namespaces and pods uh, and nodes, for example, that we're continuing to build out. We also have the ability to install and then embed the Kubernetes dashboard. So one of the things we're trying to do with Stratos is to embrace other open source projects we're not trying to necessarily reinvent um, the functionality that we're in a lot of other UIs that are out there. Uh, 
where it makes sense. We are looking for other UIs and finding the best way to integrate those into Stratos to offer a sort of seamless single pane of glass experience. So often these tools have to be deployed and configured. You have to secure them and manage them. And we want to make that easy for users. So that's something we've done with the Kubernetes dashboard. And again, we'll show that in the demo. And this is all, um, all work that we are continuing to build on and build out. So we're heavily invested in improving and extending the Kubernetes features that we have within Stratos. I mentioned Prometheus. Uh, as you can see here, Prometheus really is the provider of metrics. So if you want to understand your usage of CPU, disk, and memory, for example, um, adding in metrics allows you to do that. So we have a Stratos Helm chart for uh, Prometheus that uh, wraps it with authentication. It includes some exporters for Cloud Foundry and Kubernetes. And so when you connect, or register and connect a metrics endpoint into Stratos, it extends some of the existing reviews to include metrics. So we're able to, to detect, yes, we have a Prometheus registered. It has metrics for this particular Cloud Foundry or this particular Kubernetes. And we can then show those metrics in additional views within the UI. If you don't have Prometheus, obviously those views don't get shown. And then lastly, kind of related to the Kubernetes functionality, we've added support for Helm. So Helm is the sort of de facto package manager for Kubernetes. Again, um, there's an open source project called Monocular. And what we've done is we've taken the um, front end and back end code for that and integrated that into Stratos. We've made a few tweaks to, to make it fit in um, more generally, but it gives you the same functionality as you see on um, Helm Hub or if you deploy it yourself. So you get a catalog of Helm charts. We allow you then to deploy those Helm charts into your Kubernetes clusters. So that's something you don't get in the open source monopoly. We use Helm 3 for this. Um, and once you've deployed a chart, we uh, allow you to then view the, the details of that deployed chart, which is called a release. You can also delete a release, and you can start to view some of the relationships between resources in your release. So that was a quick whiz through um, Stratos. What I'm going to do now is jump and give you a demo. And a lot of the concepts and features I've talked about, I'll bring out in the demo, and I'll talk further. OK, so as mentioned, there are three ways of deploying Stratos. You can deploy the Docker all-in-one image. You can push it as a, an application to Cloud Foundry, or you can deploy using the Helm chart to Kubernetes. You can fully configure it um, with either of those mechanisms. <clears throat> or if you provide minimal configuration, then when you first access Stratos, you'll get the setup screen that I'm showing here. And I need to choose how I'm going to secure this Stratos, whether I'm going to just set up a local admin account or whether I'm going to connect it to a Cloud Foundry authentication service. So for this demo, I'll just pick a local admin account. I'll choose a password and go ahead and finish. <clears throat> and this now will secure this Stratos with the admin account and the password that I've just specified. And it should reload, and I'm straight in. So this is obviously a clean system. There's nothing <coughs> that I've done to it. Uh, so I get this kind of welcome screen, gives me a little bit of info. You can see on the left-hand side the nav bar, and you can see it's pretty empty at the moment. The only thing I have is endpoints. Uh, I mentioned endpoints are what Stratos uses as the generic term for things that can be connected into the, the Stratos UI. So I can do that by going up here and, and clicking on plus to, to register one. And you'll see here all of the different types of endpoints that I can register with Stratos. This is one of the extensibility points of Stratos. So you can add your own in here with some coding on the back end and front end um, to, to bring those in. I will go ahead uh, just for this demo and choose a Cloud Foundry. So you can see here I have to give some information. I can give it a name, <clears throat> demo CF. Oops, I will uh, put it some. Um, URL in. I'll say skip for that. I won't bother with this additional information. Uh, one thing we can do, uh, you see allow SSO. If you're using the Cloud Foundry UAA, then you can um, configure the whole of Stratos with single sign-on and you can configure single sign-on for the Cloud Foundry. So uh, everything will just whiz through and you won't need to log on each time when you add a new endpoint. Uh, hit register. That should Register that endpoint. Now I need to connect to it. So the pattern here is that administrators would add in the various endpoints uh, into Stratos. 
<clears throat> so those might be the different production development staging tests, Cloud Foundry or Kubernetes uh, clusters into the system. And then each user needs to connect to those endpoints with their own credentials so that they get their view on that particular world. It's not a shared credentials between all users. Each user uses their own credentials to connect to those, um, those services or endpoints. So I'm going to go ahead and connect as an admin. And you'll see we'll whiz away. And good. When we come back, I've got one endpoint here. You can see it's connected. I can click on there. Because I've only got one, I dive straight in. I'm at the Cloud Foundry view now. So you can see a few more things have appeared on the left-hand nav. I'm getting some overview information about uh, the Cloud Foundry description API version. We've detected it's got the autoscaler installed. You can see there's a bunch of apps already deployed. Uh, some users, uh, orgs, so I can click on orgs, see the organizations that I have within my Cloud Foundry. I can click on this particular one, get a summary for that org, look at the spaces that are in that um, organization. I could go ahead and create a space if I wished. Uh, I won't do that. Um, I look at the users that have access to this space, and then I can look at the, the quotas for the org and for spaces. And if I wish, I could create a new quota. Cloud Foundry has this neat mechanism where you can define quotas. You can see the kind of things you can specify here, how much memory in total that space can have. So that's how much the users of that space are allowed to use between them. Um, what's the maximum amount of memory for a particular app instance in this space? How many applications can there be there? All these kind of things. And then um, you can assign that to a space. And then whoever is using that space is limited by those quotas. So that's a great way of uh, of using orgs and spaces to kind of partition up your Cloud Foundry and ensure that users of a particular part of that only have particular um, quotas to resources. I can look at the events at the top level. Um, well, the, actually, this is at the org level. I could have gone back up to my Cloud Foundry and looked at the uh, Cloud Foundry level. I can get some sort of general information so I can see across my whole Cloud Foundry what are the routes that are being used. These are the, the kind of the URLs that you can use to advertise out um, an application. So you can see there's a few. Uh, these have been created by the looks of it for a, a demo test and uh, currently are unattached. They were created but not deleted. These other ones you can see have actually got applications attached to them. I can sort of stream the fire hose so I can get a, a global view of all of the um, metrics and other information whizzing through the Cloud Foundry system. I could choose to filter that down if I wish and just look at uh, one aspect of this of this log. Um, I can look at things like feature flags to see which things are enabled in my Cloud Foundry. Uh, build packs. <clears throat> so this is the mechanism Cloud Foundry uses to, to build applications and, and stage and deploy them. I can see which ones I've got. I can see what stacks. So because this is SUSE's Cloud Foundry, you can see I have the SLE 12 and SLE 15. I can see security groups as well, which is a way I can secure access to um, the applications in Cloud Foundry. So we've got a, a good view across uh, the Cloud Foundry instance. I can um, do things like invite users into my system. It's not configured here. I could go through and configure that, and that would allow me to uh, invite users into this Cloud Foundry. So if there are users that aren't already in the system, <clears throat> it will send them an email. Or a user can go into an org or a space and say, yeah, invite somebody into this org and space. Uh, it will send them an email. They can come through and they can get access to start working with that part of Cloud Foundry. That's the Cloud Foundry level. I can go back to applications. So this is showing me the applications uh, in my Cloud Foundry. I've only got one at this point. So uh, there's only one that I have to go out to. I could choose to filter down. Um, I can choose a particular org and space and just see the apps in those orgs and spaces. I can go ahead and deploy a new app. So I could deploy an application from various Git locations. I can deploy a Docker image. I could upload uh, a zip or a tar file of an application, or I could browse to a local folder and um, upload from there. I could just create an empty shell application. So I'll go ahead, why not, and deploy from GitHub. So I've only got one Cloud Foundry, so it's kindly auto-selected that for me. Uh, I'm going to pick an org. It's only got one space, so it's selected that for me as well. I need to pick a source. I'm going to just pick a uh, an application. If I wait a little bit, it will auto-complete. So let's do CF demo app. Um, tell me what branches I've got. I could change the branch if I wish. I can then go through, choose a commit. I'll just leave it as the latest one that it's auto-selected for me. And then I can override some elements of uh, 
this application manifest. So the application manifest is what Cloud Foundry uses to um, to deploy an application to kind of configure all the things that you can kind of see here. So a name, the number of instances, the quota that this application needs, whether we should have a root. So I could leave that as it is. Um, I probably will. So let's go ahead and do that and hit deploy. And uh, we'll go ahead and deploy. So this is completely equivalent to if you used the Cloud Foundry CF push command. And so you can see it starting to push the application. This is the same output that you would get from uh, Cloud Foundry, as I said, if you use the push command. So I could sit and wait. It's not going to take long to, to build. You can see it stages the app using the build pack. Uh, and once that's done and it's built the droplet, it will then create the app instance from that droplet and start it. So I'm going to just go ahead and go to the app summary. We can talk about this while it's deploying. <clears throat> you can see actually it went ahead and deployed it deployed already. So if I hit view, I'd have come to the same place. This gives you the um, overview for your application. <clears throat> so this is my Cloud Foundry application. I get kind of an overview here about it. I can see the quota I've used. It's not using much memory or, or disk. I can show when it's created its state. It's got one instance. It's been up a little bit, a few seconds. This is the kind of Cloud Foundry it's in. So. If I have multiple Cloud Foundries, I can easily see which one uh, this one is in. I can see a bit about, a bit about which build pack was used, what stack it's running on, um, what the command is to run the app, and what the health check is. And I can also see that it was deployed from GitHub with that commit SHA. There's a few lifecycle actions up here I can do. I could uh, edit the app, um, rename it, change the instances, quotas, that kind of thing. I could delete it, restart it, um, stop it, or restage it. I can also go down the side nav here and get some more details. So instances, I've only got one. I'm getting some stats here. I could um, either bump that up and down by one, or I could uh, just set it to, say, three. And you'll see that Cloud Foundry will now scale up my application for three instances. And we'll start to see the, uh, the stats for each of those instances in terms of whether it's starting, running, and um, how much uh, disk CPU memory it's using. Uh, roots, I can look at the roots. It doesn't have any. I can get the log stream just for this application. It's just a demo app. It's, I'm putting some, some junk really here. I can look at services. There aren't any for this app. And variables. I can see what application environment variables I've set. I can see the events just related to this app. So you'll see things like um, we created it. We uploaded the bits. Uh, we create the build. Then we updated the app. We created the droplet and we updated the app again to have three instances. So this was the event where I scaled it. We can also look at auto scale. I won't go into this in detail, but um, <clears throat> this was a contribution from, from the community that we added into Stratos where you can configure the Cloud Foundry autoscaler. So you can go ahead and create policies. So you can say, well, I only ever want there to be between one and 10 instances of this application. Uh, I can then set some rules in terms of if you know the average memory usage is between these then you know add an instance or remove an instance i can do that on a schedule and i can do that between specific dates so this is quite a rich um, interface that we have here that allows you to define these policies for applications to make sure that um, when certain metrics are met for those applications that you will automatically scale them up and then maybe scale them back down so this is a way of responding to load <coughs> uh, very easily, making sure application can always respond when maybe load grows massively, and equally that you scale back your application so you're not consuming resources when it's not. Lastly, for this application, because I deployed it from GitHub, I get a GitHub tab. If I deployed it from GitLab, we'd get the GitLab tab. Just get some basic information about where I deployed it from, um, <clears throat> the commits. I could choose to go back and uh, deploy it from a different commit if I wished. Um, say I realized there was an, an error in this one, I can easily go back to a previous one and say, hey, no, use this one instead. So that's quite nice. One other thing I can do, um, some of the uh, entities within Stratos have this nice little favorite. I can uh, favorite up there. And then if I go into my home screen, which is what you would normally see when you come in, when you have endpoints connected, you'll see this view. So I can see I've got my Cloud Foundry, and here's my application that I've gone ahead and um, favorited. So it makes it very easy to 
uh, jump into the, the applications or the cloud foundries or the orgs and spaces that you care about. So if you've got a big system with lots of these, maybe there's a few that you want to favorite and make it very simple to jump straight in. And obviously on the right hand side, as I jam around, um, we keep a track of where you've been and make it easy to, to go back to particular places that you may have visited. So that's kind of applications. Um, I should say on a lot of these lists, you can search, you can uh, sort, you can uh, switch between a list and a grid view in a lot of places, which is quite nice. I guess the um, the next thing I want to look at, if I go back to endpoints, I'm going to cheat now. Uh, one of the things we can do is back up and restore your endpoint configuration. So I'm going to restore an endpoint configuration that I created earlier. Um, hopefully, good. And they're password protected because obviously there's sensitive data in there. And this will then overwrite my endpoints. So you can see all my endpoints that I've set up previously. I've got a, a bunch of cloud foundries here. I've got um, some metrics I've gone ahead and added in and the Kubernetes cluster and a Helm repository as well. So all of these, what I've done effectively is gone into register endpoint and selected the endpoint type and then gone through the flow of specifying the URL for that endpoint. And I've connected it with my credentials if necessary. So I wanted to show that if I picked, uh, let's see, if I picked this Cloud Foundry, in fact, if I get a Cloud Foundry now, because I've got more than one registered and connected in the system, I have to choose for this part of the UI which one I want to look at. So let's go ahead and look at this one. And what I did for this Cloud Foundry is I sneakily connected a metric service that provided metrics for this Cloud Foundry. So I see a cells item on the nav, which will refresh, and it shows me what cells I've got um, deploy with my Cloud Foundry. So Diego is the sort of scheduler inside a Cloud Foundry that will be used for deploying applications. So I can get some metrics for that cell. I can look at some graphs to see how much capacity it's got, and I can see what application instances are running on this cell or deployed to this cell. So this is quite useful if I have multiple cells, which you would normally do in a production environment, and I've got a problem with a particular cell, maybe then I can see which applications are running on that cell. Maybe one of these is causing an issue, but it helps me to, to see what's going on. Um, if I go back to endpoints, I look at my metrics. If I click on that, you'll see that we get a quick view of showing us um, which other endpoints this metrics provides data for. So it provides some data for my Cloud Foundry and for a Kubernetes. Um, the other thing I can do is look at a Kubernetes. So I went ahead and registered this Kubernetes. If I click on that, then I'll get the Kubernetes view. Uh, again, because I added different endpoint types, you can see the side nav now has got a few more items on it. Um, the summary view here for the, the Kubernetes, we can um, look at the, the nodes. This is just a real simple demo of Minikube. It's only one node, but we get some stats. Uh, click on that node. Um, I can get some overview information <clears throat> about it. Again, because I've got metrics available, we show this additional um, side menu item here, and I can click on metrics and get some information about memory and, and uh, CPU. And I could also look at what pods are running on this particular node. Which is nice. <clears throat> if we go back. Uh, one of the things we talked about was leveraging sort of best open source software and trying to integrate that. So one of the things I can do is uh, if you want to use Kubernetes dashboard, I can go to configure. Uh, I can uh, install the dashboard. So this will go ahead and install Kubernetes dashboard into my cluster. Once it's deployed, I can also then create the service account that the uh, dashboard is going to use to access or I'm going to, Stratos is going to use to access the dashboard once it's all set up. So now it's all installed and configured. I could go back and access it, or I can view it from here. And what we'll do here is we will proxy the cube dashboard uh, through from Stratos, and we'll log in automatically for the user with that token, so they don't have to worry about, about that at all. Uh, and we'll get an embedded view of the cube dashboard uh, right within Stratos. So here we go. This is uh, Cube Dashboard. For those of you familiar with it, it should look uh, should like you've seen before. And I can obviously jam around um, right within Stratos, all logged in, um, easy to deploy and configure. So it's nice and nice and simple if you want to use that tool. 
um, we're here to make that easy for you. So that's kind of Kubernetes. Um, the, the next thing I want to show is Helm. So if I go to Helm, because I've already added a Helm chart, so I added the stable um, repository Helm chart, uh, the Helm item has appeared, and I can click on here, and I can get the, the charts view. So this is the, the monocular interface, slightly tweaked, but if you're familiar with Helm Hub or monocular, this should look familiar. And you can see here all of the Helm charts <clears throat> from that repository. Um, I could have actually gone over here, um, for example, and back to endpoints, and I could have added a, a Helm endpoint, right? So let me do that. I could add the SUSE um, SUSE one, so let's do, give it a name, SUSE, oops, SUSE charts, um, give it a URL, hit finish, <clears throat> and that will add in that Helm repository to the system. And the first thing it's going to do is start to synchronize the charts from that one into the uh, monocular backend. So when it refreshes, um, you see it there synchronizing. So that's quite nice. I could click through to get back where I was before and see that this one synchronized, this one is still synchronizing. OK, so now it's synchronized, which is great. I can go back to the charts. I think that's all good. <clears throat> Just make sure they're up to date. And you can see, because I've got two repositories, I could choose to filter down and look at one particular one if I wished uh, or not. I could look at the stable charts. I can just pick a chart here. I won't spend too much time going through the, the details of the values and configuration. But you see you get the, the readme for the, the chart. Um, you can see what versions there are. I can go ahead and install it directly from from here. So this is something you don't get with Monocular, um, but we've, we've added in. So the ability to pick a chart and deploy it. I can choose my Kubernetes. I can um, give it a name. So uh, Airflow Demo. I'll create a demo namespace. Um, so this is using Helm 3. So the namespace has to exist before you can actually deploy. Go ahead and hit Next. Uh, this is a, you know, a first version of the interface where you have to supply the YAML configuration directly. We're looking to add in the support for the JSON schemas and make it much easier to supply these overrides. I'm not going to provide any just for a quick demo. I'll go hit, ahead and hit install. This will use the, the Helm 3 um, client library to uh, deploy that to my Kubernetes. And so once that's deployed, I'll get the release details. So we've deployed this Helm chart to create a release. You can see I've jumped on over to the workloads view. This is very similar to the applications um, view, uh, showing the workloads in my Kubernetes analogous to showing the applications in my Cloud Foundry. I can get some overview information here about um, the pods that are in the, the release and the containers, and then some overall about all of these uh, other resources. I can choose to look at the notes that were output at the end of that release um, deployment. You can see them here. I can look at the values. So I didn't provide any. The chart provided these. I can obviously look at the combined. I can hit expand all, I can collapse all. So I can easily see what were the values that were used to deploy this particular chart. Another nice thing I can do is I can get an overview. So if I click on this, um, I can graphically, this is a new feature that's not in the production Stratos yet. It's going to be coming in tech preview. Um, but I can get an overview graphically of all of the uh, resources that were deployed by this Helm chart that constitute this Helm release and how they relate to each other. So you can see I've got a deployment linked to a replica set, linked to a pod, containers, services. Um, the colour in green is obviously they're all up. Red means they aren't um, they aren't running yet, or there's a problem. Orange is is um, they're coming up. As I quickly did there, if I click on one of these, I get the slide-in panel where I can see some information about this particular. Um, pod or container. This is a deployment, so this particular deployment. Uh, you can see while I was doing that, these things obviously came up, entered a good state, so they've gone green. Uh, and the last one did there as well. So this is updating uh, in the background. And so as you deploy something, you will see things be red or orange as their container creating um, or pending. And then as they go into the, the, the good state, they'll go green like this. So that's quite nice. I can also quickly look at the pods um, in this release get some information, I can 
um, expand, or I can click on there actually and get the, the same um, slide in view. I can click on the expander and I can see the, the information for the containers within this pod, which is quite nice. Um, I can also look at services uh, that are exposed by this release, which is quite useful as well. We'll be adding in support for other uh, resources too um, soonish. If I bring this one again, I can also click on metrics, which will jump me to the, the pod metrics for this pod. And again, this is where, because I've got that Prometheus deployed and connected up, and it knows it's providing metrics for this Kubernetes endpoint, I'm able to see some some metrics from the um, KubeState metrics exporter. The other thing I script over was um, Marketplace, or Services Marketplace. This is where I get to see services that are available to Cloud Foundry applications. So Cloud Foundry is this nice uh, concept of services where if applications need things like databases or persistent storage or um, some particular uh, capability an enterprise might want to provide, it can do through, through services. Applications can be bound to services to get that functionality. And this marketplace provides a service catalog effectively, and you can deploy new services into this. Um, so this looks a bit like the the Helm catalog view we saw with Monocula, but this is for services in Cloud Foundry. There are things like service plans and the services typically provided by a broker. And there's documentation you can get. Some of these uh, ultimately might be charged for either with real money or if it's with an enterprise, there may be some, some, some sort of you know, virtual charging for use, cross-departmental, that kind of thing. But the idea is that the sort of more stable long-term services you might need access to be those databases or particular enterprise APIs and made available as services. Application developers can try applications real quick. They can bind them to the service they need um, without having to worry about how those services are provided or provisioned or maintained. And so that's quite nice. I could go ahead um, from uh, here, I think, and I could uh, create a new instance of this particular service. So this is kind of the catalog of showing the classes of services. I can go into a particular service and then I can go through a flow where I will actually create an instance of that service. And it's that instance that I actually combined to a particular application. I won't spend too much time on this, but we have quite a rich set of functionality around the services and binding those to applications. So I think that's pretty much it for an overview of Stratos. Um, you know, we have other things like uh, user profile, all that kind of nice things, being able to edit the user profile, change password, all that stuff uh, about. There is extensibility in Stratos, so you can um, fork the repo, you can create uh, your own customizations into the UI. I gave another talk on this about how you can extend the UI, add new parts into the existing UI, as well as um, extend out on the, the side nav to add new functionality you might require, as well as adding in new endpoint types. Uh, we move quite quickly on Stratos. We're adding functionality um, fairly quickly. We try and release often. We're building out the Kubernetes functionality in particular at the moment, um, as well as looking forward to the uh, V3 Cloud Foundry API and how we support that. Okay. Well, I hope that demo was good and uh, educational. Just to kind of wrap up and summarize, um, Stratos, it's a um, single, simple install with minimal configuration. I don't think I mentioned this, actually. There's three ways of deploying it. You can deploy uh, Docker all in one, so you can run it on a developer workstation and locally, just with a single Docker command. You can push it to Cloud Foundry as an application, so Stratos itself can run in Cloud Foundry. Or you can deploy it to Kubernetes via Helm with the Stratos Helm chart. Our aim is to provide an intuitive, web-based, single pane of glass management UI. Um, and we're trying to focus on letting you manage multiple clusters, multiple environments in one place, and make it very easy to seamlessly switch between those. Um, that's, that's one of the key differentiators between this and other interfaces, where you tend to manage a single cluster at a time. This makes it very easy to context switch. We're also trying to bring together that as an integrated, rich set of functionality. And to help us with that, we are trying to integrate the best-in-class open source tools and technology so not only do we use open source um, tools in building trucks itself, we're looking at related projects that maybe have some um, UI elements that we would like to bring in. And we're finding out the best way of bringing those in. And as I kind of mentioned, we're you know, really trying to evolve this at a fast pace. So we're, we're, we're releasing Stratos on a monthly basis. We release both the upstream Cloud Foundry version and the downstream SUSE version together. And we're really pushing fast on adding new functionality.
So please uh, check out the GitHub repo shown at the top. Thank you for watching. I, I hope you enjoyed this session, and I hope you enjoy the rest of SuperCon Digital 2020.